Hey everyone, it's Dalton here. In this video, we're going to talk about how to generate more interviews as an entry-level or self-taught developer. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Donald. I'm a self-taught and software engineer, as well as an entrepreneur. And the purpose of my channel here is to share the lessons that I've gained over my lifetime, the mistakes I made so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. So in today's video, we're really going to talk about how to generate more interviews, especially if you're entry level, coming out of college, coming out of boot camp, or as a self-taught developer. This is a really, really uh, popular problem that's out there. You know, they always say that getting the first job is always the hardest, and I definitely experienced that. It took me about two years to get my first job when I graduated college in electrical engineering. And that's not taking into account the time that it took me to actually learn how to code, right? So over that sp period of time, I made a lot of mistakes and I've been able to generate interviews with companies like LinkedIn, eBay, TikTok, uh, Expedia, Amazon, a lot of big tech companies that I've been able to generate interviews with. So let's talk firstly about, you know, what everyone will tell you out there and why it doesn't work, right? So everyone, if you look on YouTube, if you search around, you'll see that everybody's telling you how to generate more interviews as a self-taught developer, how your portfolio is really important, need to build projects, can contribute to open source, you know, upload to your GitHub, stuff like that. Now, while that kind of thing can work, you know, it doesn't really separate yourself as a self-taught developer, as an entry-level developer, right? I'm all about getting an edge here. So how do you get that edge? How do you make it such that you're gaining more interviews as an entry-level developer? Well, it really comes down uh, to a building a brand. Now, why is building a brand important? Well, before we get to that, let's uh, give you a little bit of a story on my background, because I feel that it's gonna be a really important thing to, uh, because I see a lot of parallels to it, right? How, you know, software and entry level development is really, really competitive, and how, you know, it's really hard to break in and get your first client, right? So. A little bit about me in the past i owned a digital marketing agency this was around 2017 2018 or so right during this time there was an influencer called ty lopez i'm sure you've seen his ads if you uh have any experience going around youtube but he spent a lot of money on the here in my garage ad and he was promoting this one program called Social Media Marketing Agency, shortened to SMMA, right? So what Social Media Marketing Agency was is you go to business owners and you sell them Facebook ads so they can get more business. You know, every business needs new customers, but because it was so competitive, what I found was when I was running my digital marketing agency, I really struggled. You know, it was really hard to come by clients. I really had to undersell myself and just wasn't a nice time. But what I noticed is there were people who were doing really well, even though they were in the same industry. So I couldn't figure it out at that time because I was very narrow-minded and I hope you guys aren't narrow-minded and you guys are open to new things because I do believe that's the key to being successful in this life. But, you know, uh, I was analyzing why are these guys successful when I'm not? So let's talk about what I was doing that they weren't doing, or rather what I wasn't doing that they were doing, right? So I would focus about 80% of my time on outreach. So what outreach was, was it was, you know, reaching out to clients, you know, pitching them on your services. I'd spend about 90 or 95% of my time doing that, right? But how about the people that got results? How about the people that despite the competitive space, they're still able to get results. What did they do differently? What they did differently was they built a brand, right? So what they would do is they post on Facebook. They would, uh, you know, create these like valuable posts that said, you know, five mistakes that realtors make 
that's costing them money with their Facebook ads, right? And they, you know, write a long post about it. And, you know, over time, what they found was they were getting results that people were starting to trust them. And I think this is a really uh, important thing when it comes to development as well, because when you're an entry level developer, when you're a self-taught developer, you have no experience. You have nothing to back yourself out or back yourself up. So while you can create projects to build trust, you need to also do other ways to display your knowledge, right? And you do this by building a brand, you know, posting valuable content, right? So now that we got uh, the fact that we need to build a brand, you know, and why is it important to make sure that you're separating yourself from other people, and let's actually talk about that before we get to kind of the nitty gritty stuff. So, you know, why is it important to build a brand, right? Uh, at the end of the day, what I found through creating this YouTube channel, and you can see here that my YouTube channel is still quite small, but I still generated a lot of interviews through my YouTube channel. And how did I do it and why did I do it? Well, it's because, you know, I display myself as an authority figure and, you know, people follow people. So people like to see the story and see where you came from because, you know, where you came from and the things you had to overcome, you know, is a strong indication of what you can achieve in the future, right? So that's why it's important to build that brand. And you also put a face to the name, right? So when you submit a resume, you know, you're anonymous. People don't know who you are. You're just a name and work experience, right? By having a brand, by, you know, putting a face to the name, now you're not just a service. You're not just an asset. You're a person and people really resonate with people, right? So now that we talked about why branding is important and, you know, also it's been able to generate interviews, by the way. Uh, so it is, it does get results. So anyway, what you want to do, so you might be asking yourself the question, well, what are some ways to build a brand? right so one of the ways obviously my bias is making youtube videos i watch a lot of youtube you know i watch a lot of videos so obviously i'm going to make content to support the platform right so let's talk a little bit about some methods you could use to make youtube videos right so some common ways that i've done in the past one lead code problems right so you could solve these lead code problems. And this is actually how I started my channel is I started with solving lead code problems, right? Solve those lead code problems, explain yourself, explaining, you know, the logic behind it, the runtime complexity, the space complexity. Not only is this going to help you to understand the content better, you're going to show to potential recruiters or hiring managers that, hey, this guy knows a thing or two about data structures and algorithms. He knows or she knows how to problem solve. And that's always a good thing. What are some other things you could do? Well, let's just say that you built up a really interesting personal project. What you could do is you could showcase that project and, you know, make a tutorial on how to build it, you know, and then, you know, explain everything. And what this is gonna do for you, along with the lead code problems, is gonna show to interviews that you know what you're doing. Right. Because, you know, if you just copied it from a Udemy course, it would be very, very difficult for you to actually, you know, explain the reasoning behind, you know, why you did X, why you did Y, why this functions here, why that functions here. Right. It's really hard to BS because that that's another thing. Right. When you build these projects, people don't know whether you've actually built it yourself, whether you copy the Udemy course whether somebody built it for you and you're just copying it and putting it on your resume so it looks good, you know, you, again, reduce the risk that a hiring manager is to hiring you. Because again, you know, it junior devs are very, very risky inherently, right? Because they have no work experience, you know, they're not proven in the industry. So as a result, they, they are a very big risk, you know? A bad hire is very, very expensive, which is why Google uh, Google and all these big tech companies 
throw us these like leak code problems is because they want to ri not risk having a bad hire, right? So by creating these valuable pieces of content, you can show that, hey, I'm not a risk, I know what I'm doing, and I'm going to be a valuable asset to your company, right? So what are some other ways that you could do it? What are some other content ideas? Well, you could do interview questions, right? So think that, let's just say that you're a little bit further ahead in the interview process. You could talk about, you know, some of the interview questions that you've been asked, right? Like I could create a video right now on, you know, different Swift uh, questions that I've been asked. Like I've been asked, you know, what's the difference between a strong and weak pointer? You know, what's the difference between a UI collection view and a UI table view, right? Those kind of things, right? You can talk about and display the answer so that somebody gets value from that, right? But let's just say that you're not really that comfortable on camera. Now, getting comfortable on camera is a skill and it can be built up over time, but let's just say that YouTube just isn't your style. What are some other things you could do? Well, you could start by writing Medium articles. So you could write medium articles on exactly the same content, right? Top five Swift questions that companies are asking in 2022, right? You can write other things like my interview experience with X company, right? Because ultimately, you know, when somebody has an interview with a certain company, they're going to look online, they're going to you know, see what questions they've been asked. So that's where you come in and you provide value with the medium articles, right? And then also a third method that I've uh, done before is just posting on your social feeds on some of the insights that you have, some valuable posts like I talked about before, or you could easily just talk about, you know, stuff that's interesting to you in the industry, show that you have passion. So for example, uh, WWDC has just uh, concluded at Apple where they display, you know, the new MacBooks and new, uh, and the new Mac OS and the iPad OS and all the new features. And they also have a developer section where they talk about all the new features that have come out. So for example, this year, we they really talked about, you know, improvements to uh, async await, right? So that's something you could talk about in your LinkedIn posts, right? So that's good and all, but what if you're faced with the scenario that yeah, you ask yourself like, yeah, that sounds good, but I just feel like I have nothing to offer to, you know, my audience. I feel like I'm not good enough. Now, I get where you're coming from because I felt this way really early on as well, right? So what can you do in this particular scenario? Well, you had to consider that you are valuable. You are in a place that somebody, it, you're just one step ahead of somebody, right? You don't have to be a fang engineer. You don't have to, you know, have passed these ridiculously hard lead code interviews in order to, you know, create content. It could be as simple as I took this Udemy course and, you know, I didn't get value from it. So here are the things that you should look out for in uh, finding a Udemy course or finding a YouTube tutorial to avoid, right? That's going to be valuable for somebody, especially somebody who's trying to get into development and, you know, uh, wants to pick a Udemy course or YouTube tutorial, you can talk about that kind of thing and you provide value to them, right? And you're also building out this asset, you know, that you can show to employers like, hey, look, I have a YouTube channel here. I have a bunch of medium articles. I clearly know what I'm doing. That's why you should hire me, right? And it's just like something that, you know, uh, employers are going to do their due diligence. They're going to look you up. They're going to see what's out there. And when they see that you know what you're doing, that's going to play into your favor, right? Now, let's talk about the mindset thing back there and how you feel. Some people feel like they're not that far ahead. You can also talk about your story and how you got into development and why you're going into development and some of the things that, you know, you saw in your previous career that you can apply to this development. So, because everybody has a story and everybody, you know, can bring value based on the kind of skills that they gain from a past life, from a past career, you know, from school, it doesn't really matter. Everybody has their story. 
So for example, in this video, I talked about my experiences in digital marketing and how that applied to software development. Let's just say that you're a psychology major, right? You could talk about the people skills that you've gained, you know, being a psychology major and how that really applied to, you know, development and how that can apply and really uh, help you out in your interviews because soft skills are really, really important. And you could talk about that stuff using your psychology background. If you came from a teaching background, for example, you could talk about how being a teacher did X, Y, and Z uh, when it came to development. There's a million different ways that you can do it. And actually, I argue if you're earlier on, you're in a much better process to uh, to really start to build a really good brand because you're starting from the ground up. So by the time you get to the point where you're a competent developer, you would have developed all of these uh, videos or medium articles or social media posts that, you know, uh, it's going to help you to become a industry expert and rise you above all the other candidates that are only submitting a resume, right? So let's talk about some other things here. Like, you know, where do I put my YouTube channel? Well, for me, I put it on my LinkedIn and I put it as a bit.ly link on uh, my resume so that I'm not only getting subscribers so I can monetize my content later on, which is an added bonus of building a brand as well as you're developing a second source of income. But I'm also positioning myself as an industry expert in my particular space, right? So now that you guys know uh, what, why you should build a brand, you know, how it's going to get you more interviews and how it's helped me get more interviews, I encourage you to go ahead and take action on it and create your first video. You know, create a video on your story, create a video on a uh, lead code problem that you're solving. Make sure you guys take action as this is going to help you gain that forward momentum to help you guys get your first job. So if that video was helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm recording this on a different uh, iPhone today. So let me know how you know the audio quality is, how the video quality is, and I'll see you next time.